Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Tony Garadana, who is the CTO and member of the board at the Perini Foundation. Hi, Tony. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Um, so, Tony, the Perini Foundation is probably new to most of our listeners. Can you tell us uh, what does the foundation do? What's its mission in life? So, Perini Foundation is in uh, a very young foundation. We are, I think, five or six years old. We are Switzerland based. And the goal of foundation is um, adopt innovation technology technology for nature conservation and um, protecting uh, nature and the people who live in these areas. Great. And, you know, you you mentioned that you've just started a few years ago. Um, tell us a little bit about the project that you are launching with Hedera. So maybe maybe if I can roll back a little bit the history and and why innovation technology and and how how uh, it it came into existence I think the context of blockchain is important there so basically I'm I'm a blockchain geek since 2012 code level I, I was mining Bitcoin on Xboxes just for fun because there wasn't ASICs back then and my friend Roman who is also in the board the CEO he is in in nature conservation since many years so and he's been working for. IUCN, which is a very big global organization, active in, in more than 100 countries and, and an incumbent organization. And, and basically, he told them the easiest use case for blockchain is cross-border payment. And you have a lot of cross-border payments if you can save 2 3% and bring that back to the protected areas that actually need it. That's a good thing. And back then, uh, I was 16 or 17, it was still, you know, reputational risk, uh, um, regulatory insecurities, all that. So we said, we take all the risk and we create the Parini Foundation and we externalize uh, 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 the development of blockchain uh, applications that uh, are, are implemented for nature conservation. And that's why we, we started with uh, um, implementing blockchain use cases for nature conservation. So we had a big partner right from the start. We we adopted and we created a, a, a zero carbon blockchain in 2018. But slowly and and the longer the more we discovered our our uh, um, um, we, it's not our key key uh, expertise to to the maintain a layer one blockchain that's that's not what we're best at so so we started to look around for for good partner that that have a blockchain or, or or a DLT that 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 can scale that that makes sense for for big global organization and and that's why we we got in touch with with Adera where we said, well, that actually makes sense. In terms of application, um, we never said we do NFTs, but last year we did. We always called it nature collectibles. I'm I'm very skeptical towards the the, the hype elements of 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 all the the blockchain words. So last year we we built a so-called nature collectible where we uh, mapped uh, endangered species as nature collectibles. We had quite some success. It was a pilot with three protected areas. And now we um, decided to, to move to Hedera with all our blockchain applications and, and, and use that for our, um, like the, the, the real release with, with eight protected areas where we have these nature collectibles protected uh, uh, um, uh, areas with their endangered species in an app that that has all the gamification uh, that is needed for a project a project like that. And yes, I mean certainly, you know, we know very well that uh, building and maintaining a layer one network um, is is very difficult, right? So um, that is the core of what Hedera does. How did you come to find Hedera as you were, you know, realizing that that's probably not core to your business to build out one yourselves? Um, I can't remember now. I think it's personal connections, uh, coincidences. I met, uh, I had it on the radar since, since, since a while, 
but but I think through I think at the uh, at the VEF in Davos, I think that was the the key moment where where we got in touch and met and and uh, and also through some contacts that that I met in 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 uh, in uh, previous interactions where people from Hedera were working at other organizations where I was also working at other organizations where we met in previous business lives, uh, and I think Davos really was was the the kicking moment where we say oh. Let's do something. And then we met again in New York at NFT New York. Yes, yes, definitely. I know we had a contingent out at Davos and there were a lot of discussions around, you know, what kind of DLTs can be green? How can they contribute to these kinds of projects and how can, you know, projects that have an environmental focus feel comfortable using DLT? Um, I mean, so it's the as key. You- that's the key. I mean, the, the infrastructure needs to be net, you know, have a net, net uh, footprint that is zero or below. This is absolutely key also for our partner. This was always clear. If that's not the case, you know, we're not going to touch it. Sorry, I interrupted right. you. No, you're fine. So hopefully this means, you know, when you talk about nature collectibles, um, you know, I assume this means that you will, for every collectible that you sell, hopefully you will get a, um, you know, a larger piece of the donations that can go towards your work um, because there's not the issue of, you know, um, paying $30 for a cross-border payment or whatever that might be. Well, we are, we are actually, you know, quite radical in our approach. We say the primary market the first issuance is goes 100% to the protected areas. Even if we have costs, we go, we put it directly there. They receive everything the user pays, which also makes sure that there will no, there won't be any, uh, uh, wash trading or, or other, other dodgy stuff that, that you don't want in, in these nature collectibles or NFTs. So primary market, 100% of the protected area. And then what is interesting, we say, okay, in the secondary market, if you have uh, an edge collectible an NFT and you resell it, the reseller makes some money, but also some of the money that is uh, uh, added to the price is going to the protected area and the tiny portion to us. So we only uh, uh, benefit for the foundation in secondary market and the two tiny approach, uh, uh, tiny degree. And what is also important, quite often what you have in, in donation area or in, in the protected uh, area uh, businesses that there is a big donator or a foundation and they, they spend a lot of money, a lot of media presence. And basically you have a cake for Christmas, but what you really want is a bowl of rice every day. So, so that's what we try to, to, to generate recurring revenue for uh, the protected areas where there is an alignment of interest of, of sellers, buyers and, and uh, uh, the, the protected areas. And so how has, you know, you've, you obviously had the experience of, you know, building out your up, your own blockchain, um, developing on that. How has the experience been developing on Hedera? So basically we have a, a, a team of, of software engineers and, um, I was surprised how, how, how easy it is. And, um, so it was really low threshold. If you, if you've done stuff on blockchains, it's really no, no problem at all. Uh, I was a bit worried at the beginning, but it's really piece of cake. And the second thing, what, what was really good, but what I kind of expected from the personal contact that I had, like the support is massive. So it's, you know, a quick message on the Slack or a phone call or, or a WhatsApp message and, and you get support. The community is, is absolutely great in terms of support, but also in the human interactions where, where I think, you know, I don't want to, work with robots, I want to work with, with, with humans that, that are more than just, you know, numbers and, and, and figures. That's right. And, you know, I, I know our developer advocate team is so eager to help projects as mm-hmm. they work. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship with the HBAR Foundation as well? So basically, we're in touch. We uh, actually, we only briefly met online uh, and we meet the end of this week. So I would know more uh, uh, in a week. So, uh, we are in touch. It's a great support that we get, uh, in many ways. So, so, uh, but I haven't been there physically. So I'll go, go to, to, uh, the, the place near Zurich uh, on Friday. Good, good. And, and what do you see, you know, longer term, your vision for the foundation, what you all hope to do and, um, what parts of it you would like to put on the ledger going forward? So, so basically we have, um, 
we have uh, uh, two focuses, these nature collectibles and um, the carbon credits. So we develop a new methodology for uh, carbon credits. With, with IUCN, we have access to a big area of the planet on, on, on land base. Uh, basically, IUCN has created um, the green list uh, uh, standard, which is a standard for protected areas. And this standard creates already a lot of data. And we will add two more criteria that we can use that for uh, carbon credit issuance. And and that's something that we will look at very closely, very soon, also with uh, with your team. So I think there is there is massive opportunities there too. Uh, also, if you look at at the figures of of carbon credits, the predictions from Ernest and Young and all the others, and also the the the, the warning voices who say nobody is is ready for for prices of two three hundred dollars for for a ton of CO two. And and I think if we do want to have impact, we have to look at the climate crisis and the easiest and, and fastest way to measure and create impact is, if you like it or not, carbon credits. Yeah, so really taking a holistic view, right? Not only on the um, fundraising side, but bringing transparency to sort of your entire process and, um, and ecosystem. I think, and, and the challenge really is if you, if, you, if you think of, you know, organizations that, you know, that are big and, and, and have the reason for existence through uh, overhead. So if you say we want to bring transparency and efficiency is not something smart because we, you reduce your overhead, but that's that's really what, what, we, what we try to do where we say, ideally w our foundation is not needed anymore and we have tools that in in an in in idealistic vision are, are DAO managed that, that create impact on the ground. But I think DAOs are completely another topic, difficult to manage, difficult to handle. I've been, you know, collecting some experiences. So there's a, f a long way to go, but but really the foundation should be uh, uh, just the, the enabler that, that gets the ball rolling. Yeah, one, one step at a time, right? Absolutely. Well, Tony, thank you for joining us today. Um, any other words of wisdom or things you'd like to share with our community before we wrap up? Well, honestly, I think it really is worth, you know, checking the, the, the user friendliness of, of the nature collectibles. I think users understand, I mean, if you're in blockchain, of course, it's no problem, but I think we have to talk to the big masses and they understand apps and they understand web shops. And if we can have a user experience that is really an app and do all the magic with the blockchain behind or, or, or the DAG, that's that's when we can create success. So I, I'd like to invite you all to to just download the Nature Collective Lab and just get the user experience and, and and share it with your friends and family and show this is this is what blockchain is. It's nothing magic. It's just an app. And so if I want to go download that app, where do I go? Is it on the on the Apple Store? It's on, on both stores, iOS and Apple. We're looking at Huawei store as well. Uh, that might take a couple of months. And, uh, the nature collectibles, if you, if you look for nature collectibles, you'll find it in Google or whatever you look for it. Uh, there is also naturecollectibles.com website or the Perini Foundation website. And there will be hopefully quite a lot of media, uh, um, uh, reports about it as well. So that, that you will find it if you look for it. All right. And the app is called Nature Collectibles. Is that right? The app is called Nature Collectibles. That is right. All right. And it well, runs on, on Hedera. So that's uh, that's the best part of it. Beautiful. We will go check it out. I encourage everyone in our community to do the same. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you will come back as you continue on this journey and keep us updated. And uh, we appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. All the best. Hey.